Okay, so here we are once again doing another redo, and I'm kind of glad to see this because I have to point this out. I talk to people quite often that are faithful believers in the six inch iron. Some of them say, throw the six inch iron away. Let me just show you my thoughts and why. A lot of people will say, use the six inch iron and it won't peak. Well, if you got telegraphing to deal with, uh, on a four inch iron, you're gonna have a four inch telegraph. On a six inch iron, you're gonna have a six inch telegraph. So technically it, it don't do any good for that. It only, if you're, uh, it just makes a wider telegraph spot. So uh, I don't use a six inch iron. I've never had a six inch iron. So uh, I just don't like them and I'll show you why. This is why I do not like a six inch iron. Look it, if you can see. Yeah, I mean, I'm here because the seams, that's why I'm here. But the man used a six inch iron and you can plainly see, Mickey, six inches, boom, boom, right there. A complete six inches. Now, uh, um, a four inch iron, you probably would have seen a four inch strip there, but it would have been two inches skinnier. It would not have been that much. So anyway, I'm not sure what happened with the seams here. He said it felt like he melted them. Maybe his iron dysfunctioned or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm kind of curious to dig into it and see what caused it to, to look like that. So anyway, you can plainly see the six inches from the iron. You can see exactly where the tape is. And that, my friend, is why I do not like to use a six inch iron. But anyway, uh, we're gonna tear this out and examine the seams. We are gonna do that. And uh, we're gonna redo this. Now, I, I figured this and I talked to the carpet store. Last time I did this exact same carpet, I told him, I said, I do not like running carpet this way. We really got to start figuring running carpet the lengthways of these bonus rooms because when you got light coming across it, that's what you get. You see stuff like that. So uh, this is a 36 foot cut and we're going to be bringing up the stairs and around the corners and all that, but we're not going to have that. I'm going to drop me a seam right over here somewhere and then my seams will be right up that side wall exactly where my seams are going to go and because of uh they're not going to be going crossways they're going to be a lot less visible for the simple fact that the light is not going to be going across them it's going to be running with them that makes all the difference in these situations yes it is going to be here a little bit but Traffic areas typically here. I'll bring my seam back as much as I possibly can over here. I got just a little bit. See, I got about six, eight inches, something right there. So it, it might honestly be in the doorway just a little bit. But again, traffic is usually not over here. It's mostly in the center or this side over here whenever you're walking into a room. So anyway. Carpet store's gonna keep this carpet. It's brand new, just bad seams. So we're gonna we're gonna cut it by the seams and try to take back some pretty big pieces to him. And we will see exactly what goes on with these seams. We'll dissect them and see that one. See exactly what's going on with them. But anyway, let's get to work. Okay, so this seam right here, I can already see what's going on with it, why it stands out like it does. There was, uh, if you look, right there, you can probably see just by looking, see this square and then these squares. This square is obviously wider. It looks like it's got uh, one, two, three, four, five rows of yarn in it instead of, let's see here, that is the seam right there, and let's jump over here, 
instead of three rows of yarn in it. So the pattern was missed, which made that square almost twice as wide. And that's why you got that line right down the center of the seam right there. That's for that one. And there's actually hard spots, which, uh, let's see here. There's hard spots where glue came up through. Let me roll it back out here and I'll show you. So the store said there was hard spots on it like it was melting the carpet. What this is, is the actual thermoplastic from the seam tape. Come on, focus there. Right there, thermoplastic from the seam tape has squeezed up in between the seams and matted the fibers. So, see it right there too. It is thermoplastic from the seam right here. Thermoplastic from the seam. And you can definitely tell a dramatic difference here. It's a lot wider. The seam is a lot wider. Um, than it is down there because of the improper, come on, focus. Because of the improper amount of rows, they actually almost got two complete patterns together, almost. Let's go to another one. This thing right here, it's uh, pretty easy to see what's going on here. So your loops run in that direction and that direction actually got two of those loops right together right there. So again, the pattern was missed and you got two loops together, boom, boom, instead of one loop rows. And that's what makes that stand out like a big white line. And that's what's going on with this one. I really didn't expect to see that. People say it don't hurt nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. It don't hurt nothing at all. That's what they say. Is that did that hurt anything? Um, did that hurt anything? Hmm? I mean, I thought these fibers were supposed to be on the other side of the carpet. I, mean, I don't know. I might be wrong about that, but I was pretty certain that those fibers go on the front side. So, see what's going on here. Luke is going around, taking up all the tack strip and just leaving them lay where they belong. And what I'm doing, coming behind with my hammer, cutters, and air compressor, of course, my seven eight staples for underlayment. And I'm scooting my tack strip a little bit closer than what it was because how it was with this type of carpet is just not going to be uh, good. So giving myself about a quarter inch here and taking about a quarter inch from that. So I'd rather have a little bit of a gap here on the back side than here. This will float over to the tack strip and this will be a lot better looking around the edges. So I'm offsetting my nail holes. See the pile of tack strip I got right there. And also, uh, you can't see down there, but I, I cut those pieces down there off. Also, what I'm doing, I'm cutting a little bit off, offsetting my nail holes and I'm just driving those same nails right back in. 
a little closer, and then reinforcing it with my underlayment staples. So that's what I'm doing right now is scooching that tri tack forward. I was thinking about replacing it all, but then when I seen it was tri tack, I was like, nah, I'm not going to replace it. I'll reuse it and scoot it straight up. All right, so I'm getting everything measured up for my fill pieces and set, and uh, I wanted to point something out here. So this with the pattern, I don't know if you can hardly see it or not. Right over there at the edge of that, right about there, this carpet actually takes a dive that direction. The pattern does. So just to see how much it actually is, this is basically like a dry line. Just using the side of my tape measure here. I want to go right. My tape is right to the edge of my pattern right there. All the way down. And then look, right at the end, right about here, you can see it jump over a whole pattern. So it's off on the end to about, let's see here, about right here, right about that point right there is where it starts to dive in. See that? So we're good. You can even see it on the other side of my tape measure on that side there better. The pattern jumps all the way over. I actually probably could get by with about right there. So right there is gonna be good. So we need to see that's how much into the carpet we're gonna to have to cut, look at there, six inches into the carpet to get rid of that crooked edge to make our seam look good or else both pieces coming together with that bow is gonna be like a M shape or something like that. So gotta take that into consideration when you're working with pattern goods and measuring for your fields. Can't, I cannot simply expect to take two inches off of this and be good. Again, I gotta come six inches off of that. The same thing in this other room is the exact same thing. Uh, it's pretty visible in here too. So you can see the lines coming across and it is uh, about there it starts to dive over which I already measured that and it also is about six inches so we got to consider that we're going to lose a foot width of carpet on these field pieces taking six inches off of each side now I may be able to which I probably will be able to when I'm cutting my field down measure from this side and come over here and actually get a cut in the center so if I do that Say I'm going to need about a 4.6 or something in here. I haven't got it specific yet, but a 4.6. So if I take my fill piece that's laying outside and cut from this side 4.6 over, then I will simply be losing the 1 6 inch piece because over here in the center, it's not going to be off. I won't have to cut any extra off of it. So anyway, just wanted to point that out. That's something very important, very important when it comes to fills and pattern goods. Okay, so this worked out perfect, what I was talking about a while ago about my fill pieces. So the small room on the left will come off of this side. So this right here, what cut here, this part will be my seam part. The factory edge will go against the wall, so we don't have to have any extra cut off of this one. And the same thing on my long fill. This is, uh, I'll get it, this is all one piece and I will get my fill piece with one head seam. This equals up to like 37.6 and we got 36, mm, 36.3 or something like that is how big the room is. So we got plenty of carpet there. Uh, Ben's, this is just like a, mercy, a little half inch pattern. But anyway, because I'm seaming this on the right-hand side of the room, right here is where I'll be using this material, and this part here will be up the wall. So worked out perfect on both uh, fill pieces. I was able to el eliminate cutting 
six inches off of both this piece and the piece upstairs that it's going to by cutting it the way I did here in the center. But you gotta be careful about that because it don't always work like that. Sometimes you'll be a little messed up. So keep that in mind whenever you're doing pattern carpet. Sometimes it might take a, a foot extra width or something. Just cause you got 12 foot carpet don't mean you can use every bit of it. Okay, this is it. We're gonna let it be like this. Overnight, we got our fill piece and our other fill piece here. And as you can see, we got this be cut on this side. This going over here. <sighs> this piece, a little five foot piece, we will have to trim over into it uh, enough to get rid of the uh, deviated edge. But because we got so much width, because of the way I cut it up, I will take this pull it all the way over that direction and that'll completely get away from having a seam right there so happy the way that turned out um i may i'm almost 100 percent that i can do that i'll double double check in the morning before i get too carried away and caught up in the process but i'm almost certain i can get rid of that seam right there should be able to shouldn't have should not be a big deal at all because we got the room is only I, I'm pretty certain, pretty certain we can because we're only going to be losing a foot. Even if we cut six inches off of that and six inches off of that, we're only going to be losing a foot. And this is 16 wide and we got 18, we got a 18 foot of carpet width. So we got two feet to, two feet to spare. So with that being said, I may actually even come over maybe eight inches into the carpet just to be sure about it. Anyway, this one here, same exact way. Um, I will pull it over. I got, uh, let's see here. I got extra carpet here. I think I cut about a five. I cut five foot. I think I only needed four foot, six. And that is counting the six inches that I need to come off over there. So I got an extra six inches there. I may take, uh, if I feel like it's necessary, either come over into this material on this field piece. And just to be sure, maybe eight inches. Or if it is noticeable here on this edge, pretty bad. It don't look too bad right now, honestly. I was gonna say I might be able to cut a couple inches into it on this side just to make this doorway pretty here. Yeah, and I got felt down in the doorways to cover up uh, tack strip. And I got it over here to cover up tack strip. And you can see what I did because it got duct tape over the staple hose. You don't want them popping with stepping on it and coming up and stepping on it and coming up. So I just cut a little X in the staple mark and that will get rid of the popping that you hear when you when you you step on the duct tape. Step on the duct tape and there I'll step on it. You won't have that if you cut a little X in it like that. Anyway, we're going to get out of here. It is, it's about that time. It's almost 4 o'clock. I think it's like right at 4 o'clock. Anyway, it's been a pretty, pretty brutal day coming up these steps with that 36-footer. I haven't done that in a while, but it took probably, we actually, we brought it in and we stopped right down here at the bottom and took a little break. I got it stood up. Let me turn it. So I got it right here laying down on the steps like that. I had tape over all the nosings of the steps. I got it here over that and then I stood it pretty much straight up. So it was straight up right here. I bear hugged it and I went one step. Bear hugged it one step because it went straight up and down. It did try to lean over on me a little bit and fall the opposite direction. Me and Luke was able to keep it steady as I went one step at a time coming up. When we got right here, uh, I got lucky. I don't see anything at all up there, honestly. Those are, that's not me up there. I don't know what that is. 
right there, that little dot and that little dot. I don't know what those are, but those are not made from the carpet. We got, we didn't cause any damage up here, even though the carpet was standing straight up from, shoop, straight up here. And then when we got it here on the 90, it was straight up and down. I had it sitting on the end of it, was on a piece of scrap pad there to protect that. And then over, 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 over. We got it here, leaned on this wall, straight up and down again. And then once I rested again, and mind you now, all these steps were protected by painter's tape. Let it come easily down as I walked up the steps and let it laid right here. Brought it in this room here. All these corners had tape on them to protect them. Brought it straight into that attic area, then right into here. Anyway, thank you guys for tuning in to today's Daily Grind. Until tomorrow, FBSB's out.